Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths, and welcome back to the Influenza, where I have had a bit of a brain fart, a bit of an idea which will make life a little bit easier on me, and give my ship a little bit more flavour. For you see, I've been thinking about the ship, the Influenza, ignore this bit which is, which is currently decaying, and thinking what its actual role is within my fleet. Well, currently, it's going to be a somewhat quick scout, kind of, he a heavily armoured scout, essentially. Then I thought to myself, why is it designed in such, in such a way, in such a kind of, um, I would say a way that kind of shows off its size. I mean, it looks like, imagine that flying by in a city or something or taking off, it'd look quite impressive because of the huge circular blades and such, which of course are completely redundant, honestly, since you could have much more powerful small blades. Then it hit me. Why not make a bit of a story for each ship? And not necessarily a story, perhaps, but a bit of a, like, how it came to be kind of background lore and such. And I really like that idea, and somewhere I will write it down, because I don't know if you can write it down anywhere in the save files. But if it is, I will. And the Influenza, I think, is quite an easy one. And that would be, it's a repurposed civilian carrier. It's That's why it's got the, um, the less-than-ideal blades and such. It's just... It's a blimp, it's a uh, a taxi service which has been used instead for warfare to bring war to the enemies in times of um, desperate need due to its immense size. It had weapons strapped on and it had engine power redirected for shielding purposes. That's why its uh, blades are slower. Also, why I can do this, which I think is kind of cool. And the reason, and <laughs> what's on top rather, is kind of like a harness. And I love the idea, like this whole top section here, this metal red section, has been harnessed on, like attached to the hull which was previously there for the antenna, and very soon, missiles. I'm going to add missiles in here. So that's kind of the idea I'm going with now. I quite like that, the idea of a um, lore or a storyline with each ship. It makes them a bit more... I don't know, a bit more alive, a bit more purposeful. Adds a bit of flavour to the game to me. Because I do love this game, but I do find it, if you just do the campaign and just ca carry on, it can be a little bit dull. You've got to kind of insert your own fun here and there. Which is fine, because so many th giant thriving games, I mean, we can all think of, ex of one mining and crafting game in particular that, that thrives on nothing but making your own fun, really. Because, well, if you don't make your own fun, you're not really having much fun at all. Even if you do a multiplayer server or some uh, mini-game stuff, it's still pretty much down to you to make sure you enjoy it. And that's fine. So I quite like that idea, because I've always been like, you see, because um, I used to do... Well, I used to do, I, see, I still do it very rarely. I, I used to do Dungeons and Dragons when I was a bit younger. I, oh god, I adore that game. Well, I don't, not necessarily Dungeons and Dragons. I do variants of it mostly, like um, Warhammer 40k versions, random versions here and there. I, I, I enjoyed that kind of stuff. And adding a storyline to things is kind of what I do and what I like to do. So I think that's how we're going to go about this. Now, the front's a little bit light now because all the stuff we added on the back that's fine because I had an idea about that anyway because I actually wanted it to be a bit back heavy because I had some ideas what to do here uh, put it there yep that's good now I'm starting to use metal a bit which will lower our maximum altitude but if worst comes to worst I can replace the blades with the more powerful ones with the ones I should be using but don't want to and I'm, and I'm resisting f uh, quite um, fervently because, well, it requires, I think as one commenter said, so pats on the back for you, um, spin block sorcery in terms of um, allowing it to not be unstable if it takes damage and such. There we go, and that's slightly front heavy. It's so easy to ill balance a um, airship, but I love airships! It's just the fact this thing is like this is so cool to me! I love it to bits, I really do. Airships, uh, flyers in general have a space in my heart, and airships in particular have a huge kind of um, a, pl a permanent spot in my in my admirations, particularly with the influenza. So, is there any way you can actually add text? No, there isn't. So I'll have to actually like put up text somewhere or something. I guess when I upload them to the Steam page, which I will be doing soon, because um, once the influenza's done, I'm going to upload the tuberculosis, the base tuberculosis, the current E. coli, and the influenza all at once, and I will make sure to put in the description that's happened and links to find it, and I'll probably put the storyline there. I quite like it, and if, if any of you want to try and contribute, I mean, of course, I am more than happy to see that happen, because that it gets you in it on us. Actually, that's a great idea, Lathrix. 
So, Interest, if you ever want to make some sto some storyline for any of the ships, please post it on my Facebook, and I will um, take it into consideration. I really will. That seems like a very nice thing to do as well. So, yeah. Also, I just realised, this kind of means that all the red elements to the ship are elements that um, I've been adding for the war effort. Now, we are going down, but we'll go all the way to the ground. I think we will, yeah. Okay, so, 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 so I've finally overburdened the ship too much. That's fine, we'll just um, start replacing stuff with the light alloy. We're basically finished with the ship anyway. So if we can just remove the stuff we've just added, which is this floor of pure metal right in the middle, which probably isn't doing much good. Also, did I make that complete out of blocks and not... Oops, a daisy. Everything else has been out of um, pillars, I swear. I swear it's true. It's all been pillars. Ex so beams. It's all been beams. I am doing light alloy, aren't I? It doesn't look like light, light alloy. Apparently it is, okay. Lesson learned. There we go. Are we back in the air? Um, not sure. Back in a second, so I'm going to um, replace a lot of the metal with, um, with um, light alloy. There we go, we're back up in the air again. We'll be back up in, in a decent altitude in no time, I'm sure. Honestly, we don't really need this thing to be too high since we haven't got any like, downwards facing weapons, no mines, no... Why haven't I added mines? Actually, why haven't I added mines? That'd be... Well, that's something we can certainly consider. We actually haven't got any ammo yet on this ship, so that's something else we need to rather consider since it's all based off... Um... I think, I think I said it before, didn't I, before I cut the last episode. I'm, I'm sorry I haven't really done much off-camera. I've been a bit busy with ARK at the moment because I'm an addict, and I've also been quite busy in real life at the moment. Um, with the move, quite a few things suddenly happened at once, and I was caught, kind of caught off guard. So my my usual uh, six hours a day to work on YouTube at minimum has gone down to about three or four at most. So certain games like, you know, From the Depth, which requires so much time it hurts, suddenly did suffer a little bit. How much? How good is the um, radar on this? I'll never know until I get into the actual uh, game. That kind of sucks, but oh well. There we are. Yay, we're in the air now. Fantastic. Yeah, perhaps now I can replace these blades with the better blades. I will check that later. So for now, we'll build it as it is, just with what I've got. Then later on, I'll perhaps change that. So first of all, we need to sort out the ammo. And actually, honestly, we could put ammo in here. I mean, this could be an ammo box. It's metal. It's technically the strongest part of my thing. Um, that's not terrible, honestly. Okay, yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, okay. We'll have a mini box within the box, just for a few um, pieces of ammo, and then we'll have loads of ammo um, processors later on. That's what we'll do. Put these here. Then want the ammo processors on the edges, because what we're going to do is we're going to pop all that metal there into a box. So all those am ammunition boxes into a box of their own. And since these things don't blow up here, have a load here as well. There we go. Are we front heavy or back heavy at all? No, we're not. Cool. Although for a second I did think we were going backwards because of some like, weird visual um, trick there on my eyes. So blocks, light alloy again, and let's use the pillars because I keep the beams. Beams, pillars, same thing. Well, very similar, very similar things. Actually, what 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 is the difference between a beam and a pillar? Someone Google that for me and tell me in the comments. I don't know what what is the difference between a pillar and a beam. I guess it's um use. I I imagine would be one of the big differences as well. Pillars generally hold things up. Beams can be anywhere, but say I know that beams can hold things up, and I know that pillars could no pillars are always upright, aren't they? That's by definition. Is a pillar just an upright beam? I don't know, and I'm confused now. Okay, what I'm going to do is one floor up here, and I'm going to use blocks because it's easier. Now that's going to be the flooring for the missile system, that way there's no chance the explosion will knock it out straight away. So okay, so we're not going to make a huge missile system by the way, because I don't trust it after what happened last time. Okay, like that missiles, and then we want the six-way connectors, we're going to put them down here probably want to stop making everything red right now. It looks like a blood room. Red rum. Red rum. That way. Um, missiles, I love you. You love me too. Ah, the and the music came back on without me even clicking anything. It understood that laughter should never sing and uh, shut me up. 
Okay, next I want the amazing thing known as actual missiles. I hear they're rather useful when firing missiles. Uh, how big do I want these? Probably quite... I'm thinking quite long-range, nasty missiles from top. Maybe one more. Yeah, that'll give me enough to do whatever I want. Yeah, that'll give me enough to have two fins as well. Okay, that, yeah, that's how much I'm going to need. So I'm just going to fill all these in. Like so. So we're going to need a safety fuse, a safety... Um, uh, Oh, what's it called? We need a failsafe for the AI. I want to add the AI. We need the friend or foe realization thingy, protocol thingy thingy. And then, oops. Then we need to eat into the hull of our ship. Okay, so instead, I'm probably going to skip here unless something really weird happens. So if I suddenly disappear, it's because Future Lapfrix has decided that this is a boring part that you don't need to see. Wow, that was exciting. I sure hope Future Lapfrix didn't cut that out. Okay, so anyway, we've um, sorted out the missiles. Here they are. I feel like I've missed something with them. I really do, but I keep on thinking about it. I can't think of what I've missed. They have both explosive and fragmentation warheads. The fragments, of course, being far, far sh shorter angle than usual, and they don't have the proximity warheads, meaning they'll, they'll be of a lot less lag. They also have a load of um, cylinders, meaning that they'll be shot out quite ferociously away from the ship when they're first shot. So, is it time to test? I think it's time to actually do a bit of testing then. Hello, Marauder. I, I, I just want to see the missiles go. There we go, that's how I wanted to see it. And look at that angle I can go at as well. Fantastic. The lasers have already destroyed quite a bit of it, but still. Here we go, and... Down we go. Yep, that was fine. That was exactly what I wanted to see. A, a, a nice missile volley that could get them. Obviously the ones on the other side couldn't, but close enough. And the turrets. Oh, I have improved the turrets slightly. I've um, increased their barrel size slightly so I have a bit, bit more recoil suppression, but I have kept them being quite um, weak because the explosive barrels and everything simply um, caused this vehicle to cost itself even more. So the last thing I need to do is just add a actual fuel storage and the ability to make some more fuel. There we go. It's turning away because it's got a... Oh yeah, and I've, even, I've even, even made the AI now make an even further attempt to, to get away from enemies so it stays quite far back. So that was quite a nice volley, quite a lot of damage done. The lasers didn't get um, to start off, but of course, in a proper battle, you'd start off way further away than that, and thus the lasers would have been on from the very start. So I am actually quite happy, honestly. Um, I don't think it's particularly the best ship in the world, but for fun's sake, uh, yeah, for fun's sake, and just the fact I like this kind of ship, I think I did okay. It, um, it It's currently trying to rise because of the turn, which is great, exactly what I want to see. So yeah, everything is has kind of fallen into place. Let's just sort out the um, oil then. Probably not something I need to show you. It's all pretty much basic stuff. It's just look at resources. We need we need fuel processors and at least one fuel storage tank. That's all. I'll 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 just pop them at the back of the engine. Uh, just before I skip ahead to something else, the missiles on the side can actually make a full um 180 degree turn if we are at the maximum distance of our um. Uh, of our attack run. So that's actually really good. Nice missiles. Okay, back in a second. Again. Okay, so I think to round off this episode and show a bit of fun, we're going to be destroying the influenza, sir and threats. We are now spawning in an evil influenza. The influenza of the deep water guard. A bit too high, actually, so something will float down a little bit. That's actually beyond its um, limit, I think. Then over here, try to make sure it's actually far enough away that it's fair. Where are you? You're currently here. Of course the starter raft needs to die first. Okay, so let's let the starter raft die, let's let the influenza have its fun, destroy the enemies that are actually there for it. Oh, of course I could just spawn them out. That's all I'll do. Thanks influenza for killing me. Meanie. Okay, that's what I was doing. So does it stop firing? Good, good. Uh, which way is it going? Coming towards me, okay, that's what I wanted to see. Over here we're going to spawn in on our side. You guessed it, the one, the only, the mighty, E. coli. Mark III. Which, which, which my current E. coli. Damn, this thing weighs in a lot of white. A lot of metal. But it does make up for it with its power. Now where is it? There it is. They are firing upon each other. As you can see, the back of the um, influenza has already been taken out. How's Liza doing for the... Is that even firing? It is, on two lasers coming out, we can't see which one. 
where's it doing damage? Ah, the um, damage being done to the E. coli is lagged out, so we'll see that in a second. It's still in the air, I mean, I, I'm actually impressed it's, it's actually still in the air at this stage. Well, here comes the uh, missile volley. Now remember, these are quite nasty missiles, they're not the standard kind I use, they're actually, um, they have they have the single fragment, but they also have explosives, and they will land on the target rather than proximity, so these are going to do a lot of damage when they actually strike. However, I'm fairly certain the, co the uh, influenza's AI has been knocked out. Where's that damage then? I saw the laser hit the metal. There's a hole there, but... And the, uh, and the, and the repair bots are out, yeah, it's just lag damage. That's a shame. I, I, I would have liked to see how much... Well, we're sinking on the left side, so clearly we've got a hull breach. Just we can't see where the hull breach is. Cannot see at all where the damage is. But, as we just saw, it was a very decisive victory for the Ecoli, as we would imagine. Because, well, um... The Influenza is a full 400,000 metal less. Wait, no, it's not. It's, like, it's about 200, 300... No, this one's 800,000, so it'd be about 300,000 less, a bit less than that. Uh, in terms of metal, and it's made out of light light alloy to support its weight, and it hasn't got good good weaponry, and just of course the fact that the um, the coli is built better. Honestly, the coli did have a lot of effort just to be built well, whereas the influenza has been built for fun. Where's the damage the laser did? That's what my question is. Did it really repair that fast? Wait, was I too close to it? So I was actually repairing? I think so. Hmm. Well, I guess it was just repaired after the lag. I mean, I, I saw the laser hit, and that laser is as strong as the two lasers on the front here, so there should have been a hole made from it. The missiles did quite well, though, honestly. They took out everything they touched, which is nice. So that was okay. It was a decent show there by the influenza, but at the end of the day, the E. coli is a bit of a beast. And the E. coli will be um, terrorising more in the campaign next time. Along with the Influenza, they'll both be there together in their own fleet. So, well done Influenza for trying, and that is the end, I think, for the Influenza and its upgrades. I think I'll be leaving it as it is. I like the idea of it being quite ramshackle, I like the idea of it being a transport carrier, a human carrier, a people carrier is what I was looking for there, a transporting human carrier, and yeah. Goodbye, Influenza. You put up a good fight. Tell you what, E. coli, turn off. I want to see how much damage that laser does do, because that honestly has made me a little bit nervous, not seeing any damage. So Influenza... I mean, I have seen it do damage before, so I know for a fact it can do damage. I just haven't seen it in this particular fight, which is what annoyed me. Oh, it's, it's actually 870, so it's just over 200,000 then. There we go. Oh, of course, we still haven't finished off the um, bottom of the turrets, but it didn't seem to actually be a huge issue. Okay, there we go. I can actually see an explosion now. The laser isn't that accurate, but I was intentional. I wanted it to do a bit more area of effect damage than um, crippling damage like, like lasers normally do. So in real time, this has been about... In, so in terms of game time, without, without the slowdown, it's been about three seconds now. Well, it's cut into its hull. I mean, there's an explosion, so it only took a few seconds, and it's completely removed the entire front turret and half of the laser system. That's not exactly weak. But I still think, even now, if we turn the um, the um, AI of the Influenza back on, it would probably still win, because the laser systems are online. Yep, straight away, the lasers have cut through it. So, yeah, I think the Influenza needs a few more changes, which I will do before the campaign, which you don't need to see. It's all very back boring stuff now. It's just going to be armoring up the laser and making sure the back section area is a bit more armoured, since things like lasers will be aiming at it straight away. Because I only just added the fuel. But on the upside, the lasers are good enough, um, I'm, ha I'm happy enough with the medium accuracy. The missiles actually seem to be pretty darn good if you watch them then. The explosion does damage, and then the shots shoot out. Which means even though the shots are being reflected by shields and such, the explosion damage is still getting through. Um, it's very accurate. Yeah, I'm happy enough with that. And I'm sorry, Influenza, that you're going to be killed again. Actually, you're surviving better this time. Oh, because you've, you've done, done damage to the laser system. Okay, well anyway, I guess we can watch the rest of this play out. There's no harm in that. I'm kind of hoping the Influenza wins. Oh, no chance. There goes the Influenza. Nasty shot there, directly into centre. 
AI is off again. Yeah, it's so hard to beat a f as that kind of ship. You're not going to pick it just the the E. coli is so damn good. It's like it's just a horrible, brutal mess of power. Well, it took out one of the laser systems at least. Oh, what's it firing at? Oh, they're both um, they're both AI dead. Also, it doesn't have any repair bots again. Things I'm going to change off camera, which you don't really need to see. I am still happy to see missiles, though. Missiles make me happy again. I was happy that the explosion damage get, get, gets gets through the shield, so even if the fragment doesn't get its full payload, it's still doing some damage. Okay, well, thank you for watching, Stone Threats. If you have enjoyed this episode and have enjoyed um, and are enjoying the series, then, of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out channel, and most importantly, most importantly, shows that you want to see more from the depths in the future. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. And remember, if you want to ever add some lore to the ships, like the E. coli, or the, or, the, or the tuberculosis, or even the influenza, please go to my Facebook page and post the lore. If you want to add dedicated lore to an extreme amount, or even just a small amount, then there is the best place um, over on YouTube. It's a bit of a novel if you try to add it in the comments. So thank you, and goodbye. Poor influenza. It'll do better against uh, missiles and... Cannon fire lasers are obviously going to just gut this thing so well. Thank you, goodbye.